Hello and welcome to the second devlog for Endless Drift. Like I said in the first devlog, I wanted to put more focus in drifting. So I started this week by making a system to determine when the car is drifting, and a system to score the player for how long they drift. To determine if the car is drifting, I use the dot product between the velocity and the local x-axis of the car. If this dot product returns a value over a drift threshold that I set, then I know the car is in a drift. I actually did something similar to determine how hard the car hits the wall. So when you first enter a drift, a coroutine starts tracking the score for as long as the car is drifting, and once the drift ends, or basically the player drops under that drift threshold that I set, the score is multiplied by the multiplier and then added to the total. And speaking of the multiplier, the checkpoints no longer just give you 10 points, and now they're only worth 1 point, but they also add 0.1 to the multiplier. This way you can earn more points as you make it further into the game. As I was testing some of this, I was noticing a lot of jittering in the car's movement. So I tried decreasing the fixed time step in Unity, and that actually helped quite a bit. It also seemed to have improved the bouncing car problem I had in the first devlog, but it still shows up at some of the higher speeds. To fix that, I ended up locking the Y position through the rigid body constraints. It surprisingly didn't break everything else, but I think that's because I use the drag value on the rigid body rather than any friction from the physics materials. At this point, the car could drift, but it looked really boring, so I decided I would start with some smoke particles. Once I was happy with how they looked, I hooked it up to the drifting system so that the particles only admit when the car is in a drift. While I was testing the smoke particles, I thought of one potential exploit, where the player could turn the car around and drive off the end of the road, and if you do that, you could just keep spinning the car around and get as many points as you want. It's probably impossible to actually pull this off, but I put in a check anyways to make sure you can't drive backwards. Now the checkpoints don't get destroyed when you pass them, and if you hit the same checkpoint twice, you lose. The next thing I did to improve the visuals of the game was to model some roads. I started with the straight segment, and I was able to use that to easily make the turns. Then I added in a little more UI, and made it so the game doesn't start immediately after opening. I started playing the game some more to test it, and I noticed that when you get really far into the game, it feels like the car stops accelerating, and that's because it does. Since I put a drag on the car, it reaches a point where the acceleration force I apply can't overcome that drag, so the best solution I could come up with was to increase the force when the speed increases, and I was kind of concerned that this would make the car control differently later in the game. I decided to try it anyways, and as far as I can tell, it doesn't have any major negative effects to it. I decided that the roads were a little too boring still, so I went and added curbs on the turns. I also added a slight curve to the outside edge of the turns, which gives a little bit more space when you're going through the turns. The smoke particles definitely made drifting more satisfying, but I could do better. I added a trail renderer to each of the wheels that draws skid marks as you drift. I originally tried to do this with another particle system, but it really just wasn't the right tool for the job. So if you plan to do anything like this, look into trail renderers over particles. The last thing I needed to model for the game were the walls. I originally planned to make some tire walls, but they didn't show up very well on the game. Instead I made these concrete barriers, which work pretty well for straight edges, but I was having a hard time lining them up on the curves. So I ended up using the tire walls for all the curved walls, and I added a thin wall behind them that makes it a lot easier to see. I wanted to get a main menu set up this week so that I can start building on it. For now I just added a play button and a quit button, but I'm going to use this as an opportunity to learn how to make better looking UI components. From here I'm planning to add in some sounds and polish the game to finish it off. I'll be keeping it up to date on itch.io if you want to play it, and I'll leave a link in the description with the password to access it. That's all I have for this devlog, so if you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.